Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to our worship service this morning. Uh, reminder that Thursday is Thanksgiving and we will be having our uh, Thanksgiving worship service. Um, communion will be offered as well and masks are strongly recommended and so we'll also be social distancing as usual. Um, we begin then by singing our first hymn, Come Thou Almighty King. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father, asking for forgiveness in Jesus' name. <coughs> Almighty God and Father, we confess that we have sinned against you and one another. We have sought security in things that are here today and gone tomorrow. We have sometimes neglected to seek first the kingdom of God. O God, for Jesus' sake, forgive us for our failures and our faithless attitudes. Guide us by your word and restore us by the power of your spirit, that we may follow you in true faith and obedience. People of God, we come into this world with nothing and we leave in the same way. Everything we have in this life is a gift from God, especially God's forgiveness and acceptance, which brings us here today. At the command of Christ and through the power of his cross, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King of all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights and the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, 
and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, merciful Father, you have appointed your Son as judge of the living and the dead. Enable us to wait for the day of his return with our eyes fixed on the kingdom prepared for your own from the foundation of the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Uh, this morning's Old Testament reading comes from Ezekiel chapter 34. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for the sheep and look after them, as a shepherd looks after his scattered flock when he is with them. So will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered on the days of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing land, and they will, and they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have, have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak, but the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and will be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today's epistle reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ, the firstfruits, then, when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now when it says that everything has been put under him, it is clear that this does not include God himself who put everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him, so that God may be all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory, glory to you, o Lord. Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 
He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothing and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We join now in the confession of our Christian faith as we speak together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we join in singing our hymn.
God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our Gospel reading. Today is the last Sunday of the church year. A new one begins Sunday with the first Sunday of Advent. Today also is called Christ the King Sunday. And so we remember Christ as our prophet, priest, and king today especially. We keep in mind these things as we end the church year by having as our themes the, the, the last day and the, uh, the jud- day of judgment and so forth. And so here again we find this same theme. When Jesus comes again in glory, he will judge. And he'll separate all people into two categories. We heard in our Old Testament lesson that Ezekiel called them fat sheep and lean sheep. Jesus in our gospel reading calls them sheep and goats. Wherever, whatever we call these different groups, on the last day, Jesus will sit in judgment over the people, the fat sheep or goats, from the lean sheep or the sheep. Now the question before us today is this, which group will you be gathered with? Will you be a goat or will you be a sheep? The goats or Ezekiel's fat sheep push others. They abuse those who are weaker than they are. The goats scatter the faithful sheep and treat them like prey. The sheep, on the other hand, feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, take in the stranger, clothe the naked, tend to the sick, visit those in prison. The goats live for themselves and for what they can get. The sheep live for others and for what they can give. So which one do you look like the most? Do you look like a goat? looking after only yourself while ignoring others, pushing them and their needs and desires aside while striving to get only what you want? Or do you look like a sheep, always looking out for others, caring for people in their time of need and trying to help them however and whenever you can? If we are honest we'd all have to say that we are, at certain times, like goats, and at other times, like sheep. Sometimes everything going on in our lives blocks out our ability to care for and even even the slightest bit about what someone else might be going through. Sometimes our hurts, our our struggles, our our, uh, tribulations, our pain, Uh, might blind us to the same trials that others are uh, having in their lives. But sometimes those very struggles lead us to see just how difficult life is for someone else. I I can't tell you how many times I've heard it over the years as I've heard people, yeah, Pastor, but there are so many people subjects of Christ our King. Jesus comes on the last He will gather all people together. All people, not just good people, not just Christian people. When He comes again in glory, Christ will raise all from the dead and take His seat at the great white throne and then He will gather Himself uh, unto Himself every single person who had ever lived, you and me and everybody else and everyone who comes after us. And then he will separate us into the goats and the sheep. To the goats, to those who care only for themselves, he'll say, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. And these will go away into everlasting punishment. And to the sheep, To those who care for others, 
Jesus will say, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom that, you, uh, that has been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And the righteous will be welcomed into eternal life. We don't know when Jesus is coming, but we do know he is coming. So now is the time to repent for living like goats. Now is the time to give up living for ourselves only. No matter how difficult your life may be, now is the time to set your heart, your mind, and your hands to service for others in their time of need. Now is the time to be a sheep. Once Jesus returns, it's too late. If you don't repent and take up your life as a sheep, when Jesus does return, no excuse will do. In the presence of Christ, our Almighty King, you can say all day long and as loud as you want, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? It won't matter. It won't matter one bit. It won't matter how long you say it, how many times you say it, how loud you say it. Once Jesus returns and begins to judge, his judgment will already be made. So now is the time to repent for living like a goat. Now is the time to be sheep. Now is the time to live for love and live in love for Christ, your King, and in service to your neighbor to live for others, to serve others in their time of need, to help your neighbor whenever he needs it, is to live as a sheep, as one who is a loyal subject to the Christ, our King. Here and now, we serve Jesus by serving the people in our midst. Is your next-door neighbor lonely? Go visit them. Call them on the phone. Is your neighbor struggling after the death of a loved one? Be the shoulder they need to cry on. Is your brother in the faith having trouble adjusting to life during these trying times? Does your sister in Christ wish she could just get out once in a while and see family and friends? Then pray with them. Pray for them. Be the presence of Christ in their lives. Love your neighbors in thought, in word, and in deed. Not because Jesus needs you to do these things, but because your neighbor does. And when you do it, even if, uh, even if you, no matter who you do it for, you will be doing it for Jesus. Um, if you do it for even the least of the brothers and sisters of Jesus, You do it for him. Every time you help your neighbor like this, you're serving Jesus, your king. Every time you help your neighbor, you're simply being who God has created you to be in Christ Jesus. St. Paul says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And adds, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God himself prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. The good works God wants you to do are as close as your nearest neighbor. The chance to be Christ's sheep is as close as the person sitting with you in the pew today. Christ has created you to be his sheep, He has made you to be who you are in Christ our King. He has called you by the gospel and made you his own. He has saved you from your sins and from death and given to you everlasting life. He has restored in you partially, at least for now, the image of God in which we were created. And now... He expects that we too will be the sheep that we are called to be. For those works that he has given us 
that he prepared from eternity that we should walk in them even as he has called us to do. So don't be a goat and neglect the good things that God has prepared for you to do. Be God's sheep. Love your neighbor, not only with your feeling, but also with your deeds. Because God has promised that when Christ returns in glory, he will gather you to himself and welcome you into the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world, the kingdom of heaven where Christ the King reigns forever. It's a kingdom filled with sheep. Don't be a goat. Only sheep will be there. And when Christ comes again, you will hear him say, Come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and you will pray, come Lord Jesus, be our guest, that we may be yours forever. Amen. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise for prayer. <coughs> Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Our response will be, Lord, have mercy. For the faithful proclamation of Christ our King and for the strengthening of God's people in this true faith and their baptismal lives in Christ, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For Christ's holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, for all who faithfully confess the saving name of Christ, and for the protection of the Lord to extend over us against the devil, the world, and our own sinful selves, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For God's people in this place, for the mission and work God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit and a spirit of cooperation and harmony in life together, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For all the schools of our church body, for the seminaries where our pastors are being trained for your service, and for the campuses where our young people are being prepared for their occupations as they are called by their vocation as God's people by baptism into faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For all those who share God's word with people around the world, especially for those who serve in missionaries and in foreign countries, Jana Engelhardt and Josh Lang and family, that you might bless them and keep them. We pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those who have wandered from the flock of God, for the faithful shepherds who gather them in through the voice of God's word and for forgiveness and for our willingness to forgive others in Christ's name, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For our president, our governor, our president-elect, and in all and all who are in authority over us that they may not abuse and trust the power placed in their hands but use it honorably and for the good of all people let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy for all artists and artisans for science and invention for those who serve us in the medical arts for tradespeople and laborers for those who are who serve and protect us as police firefighters, and military personnel, for all those who serve us in the medical field, that they might use the gifts that you have given them to the best of their ability, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the hungry and homeless, for the unemployed and underemployed, for those who work in disaster relief, and for the social aid service agencies of our church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy for a giving spirit, that we may not neglect the poor, nor fail to provide resources to the church to fulfill the Lord's bidding and spread the gospel to every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for those afflicted by illness of body or mind, and for those who care for them, especially for Nadine Petrosky, Kristen, Gary Brunsbach, Pearl Abrahams, Elaine Trainer, Anselm Wimmer, Gene Schilling, Bob Anderson, Bill Berry, Pat Ellis, and Judy Johnson, that you might bless them and get that stre God's strength may be kept in them through patience and delivered to everlasting life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the grieving that they may have hope, especially for the family of Alan Miller, who you called Sunday to his heavenly home. Bless them and keep them in, in, their, in your care, and that they may be reminded that the end is near of their earthly lives, and that we may be sustained in faith to everlasting life, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our hymn.